Hello everyone, welcome to the Groot Winterhoek Mountains. I'm Hendre from Cape Carnivores and today I'm going to be taking you around to some of the biggest carnivorous plants in the world and a massive diversity of sundews, most of which you've never seen before. Stay tuned. Hello again. I see you have found yourself a forest of proteas. So all these plants around me are part of the Proteaceae family, also known as the proteas. And we have a few different types here, starting with the Blushing Bride Cerurias. These are gorgeous mountainous proteas, mostly. And in front of us we have the cone bushes, the Leucodendron. So these are dioecious, that means they have a male and a female plant that are separate. So these will only flower female for their entire lives. To our left of us we have Protea repens, which is a very lovely big protea, very common across the Cape, also known as the sugar protea, sugar flower. And to our left we have the Varbworm, the wagon tree. This is Protea natida. Super rare now, not rare, it's threatened. And back in the day it was used to build wagon wheels because the center wood of the stems is incredibly dense and hard. Good for the long distance travel by the ox wagons back in the day. It also burns very well, which makes it quite vulnerable to the forest fires. Or felt fires, rather. So now, just in this tiny area, we have four different proteas and there are dozens more around us. Love these these uh, these yellow cone bushes here. They are god they're so pretty. Hello there and welcome to the land of Aridula dentata, also known as the Cedarburg dew stick or the flypaper bush. This is probably one of the biggest conifer plants in Africa, if not the biggest, contending only with Trifophyllum in Ivory Coast, sort of north of Africa. So this is a large conifer plant that some consider a proto carnivore. I consider it fully carnivorous. That's because of its fascinating method mechanism of carnivory. Unlike sundews and other sticky coniferous plants that produce enzymes in the leaves, Aridula makes a resinous trapping fluid, so it can't put enzymes through it. Instead, it has a tiny little assassin bug that lives on the plant and scuttles around and any time the Aridula catches a bug, they go zoop, trapped in there and the bugs come, eat them up and excrete on the bottom of the leaves, releasing the nutrients for the plant. This is an established symbiosis, the assassin bugs are called Pameridia, I think it's Pameridia ruridulae and Pameridia molothii, which are only the latter of which is only found in Viridula dentata, which grows here in the Grootwinterug Mountains and in the Cedarburg, whereas Viridula gorgonis is way down by the coast, and it's a little bit shorter and bushier, whereas Viridula dentata is big and scrawny and all over the place. What a fascinating plant to see out here. See you at the next one. Oh, Harry, check. Mm -hmm. Graveyard candle with a store matches. Harry, you know what? Yeah. You can even get like a high quality audio voiceover of you saying that. So here we have a cute little Dyser. This is Dyser and Flexer. It's a common species across the mountains of the Cape with this very long spur at the back, little venations on the lip. Very small and dainty species, but really pretty. It's lovely to see this. So here we have another Drosera. This is Drosera linaflora. It's a sister flora type. Very long, strong, thin leaves. Grows mostly on ledges. This is actually quite a dry, rocky habitat. Out here in the Grootwinterdijk Mountains. This is a white flowered form that we only find around here, to the best of my knowledge. See, there's a lot more of them here in the shade. There's Erica. So these are very upright form and grow quite tall. I found them about 35 centimeters in places. Really fascinating location for them as well as the ground is super, super dry. You can see Drosser trinervia growing here in the cracks. But if we come up here, you can see it is absolutely stunning out here. So here we have everyone's favorite, most famous sundew, the Drosera capensis. Some smaller ones, we've got some bigger ones in here. So these are growing in what I must assume to be permanently wet habitat, very waterlogged, PT. There's lots of sort of detritus here. It's almost on a rock. I'm standing right on a rock here. And just there's a capensis. So they only grow in perennially wet habitats. 
See, there's a lot of them growing in here with the bushes. We come up here, you can see there's even more in this pool here, or in long grasses. It's really overgrown, or up in the mountains. I'm not sure what our elevation is, but it has to be high. About a thousand meters, I'm told. Just absolutely incredible. So here we have more capensis, Drosera capensis, with Utricularia biscomata, the common Cape bladderwort. They're growing together in this marshy land. This capensis is really incredible in color. Super deep red form, and you can see here, a little mosaic of peaty pools, patches of stone, these resty and AC, these grass-like plants growing in here. Super chuffed with the spot, and I mean the view. Can't beat that. Wow. So I found myself in a little cave, dugout type thing amongst the rocks, and here on this maintenance tree, it's a leopard scratching post. So these are pretty fresh as well. As you can see, it hasn't scored over yet. So leopards often come in here and scratch. I assume to sharpen their claws. And you can see the scars are running up the tree. There's some much older ones there. So this is really fantastic. And you can see this tree is growing all the way up out into the world there. How fascinating. And such a rare special sighting. Leopards in the Cape are incredibly rare and elusive. So to find any sign of them is a big treasure. be able to see the first weather has unfortunately ended our trip a little bit early with wind and intense rain the carnivorous plant unfortunately has come to an early end however it was really fantastic seeing the enormous viridula and the absolute millions of tiny little drosera trinovias afras drosera linoflora and many others it was a great pleasure to be here with my great friend harry and neil so thank you for coming along with me on this adventure and i'll see you on the next one